monsters from the underworld, always try to pass through Nether's realm battlefield to invade the Chillin continent on the spirit realm, where humans live. For nearly a thousand years, human warriors have fought the Nether clan on this battlefield to protect Chillin continent. From the Nether battlefield, warriors are fighting to kill soul-devouring beasts that have escaped the battleground and are about to break through the fourth level. In the lead of Chuanchen Alliance Ken Lai, Ling Yushi, the first lady of the Ling clan, and others are on their way to defeat the beasts. When one of the low-level beasts tries to attack Ling Yushi, Kin Lai saves her with his lightning abilities. He gets advised to not waste his spiritual energy on the low-level beasts as high-level soul-devouring beasts are waiting for them up there. Soon, a soul-devouring beast appears and Kin Lai, with his lightning ability slashes the beast's soul in half. Kin Lai's lightning abilities enables him to directly hit the monster's soul, Plus he doesn't get affected by the beast's nether demon energy, making him a reliable killing machine, despite his troubling attitude. On the nether battlefield, Liang Zhang explains that the soul-devouring beasts are monsters raised for years by the nether clan. To defeat the third level monsters, they are going to fight them in the valley. Another warrior team has already been dispatched to cast an array to trap a stage 3 soul-devouring beast. They needed to limit its power because even 19 warriors combined could not defeat such a beast. In the deep valley, Xuanchen uses the octopole fire array to make the monster completely immovable. However, since she has to use her own power to activate the array, she can get easily defeated by weak monsters. While everyone tries to protect Xuanchen, Gao Yu decides to recklessly attack the main body of the beast. To his surprise, a beast emerges from the ground and attacks him. Kin Lai manages to save him with Yushi's help, who revealed she has the purple eyes. The eyes shock everyone. Liang suspects the soul-devouring beast, using an evil aura, is trying to summon the nearby high-level beasts. Inside the fighting field, everyone goes to attack the soul-devouring monster to stop it from summoning other beasts. However, when Kin Lai and Gao Yu go to join others in attacking the soul-devouring beast, it swallows Yushi from the back and uses her power to become stronger. Liang realizes it was all soul-devoted beasts plan to trick everyone to stop the beasts from being summoned. It was only to get the chance to swallow Yushi since it noticed her using the evil power before. After realizing they have lost the battle against the beast, Xuanchen goes to finish the beast with her final attack. She gets stopped by Kin Lai, who summons the Heavenly Thunder Eradication to save Yushi and bring her body back. He finally succeeded in saving her. After the battle ends, they head to the Feng Clan. They notice the Feng Clan has been exterminated. The Feng Clan was celebrating its victory in defeating the Ling Clan. But suddenly a member of the purple-eyed evil clan appeared and controlled their souls to kill everyone. Kin Lai is checking the location. However, Xuanchen, after realizing the extermination was done by someone from the evil clan, kills Yushi. Kin Lai, in enrage, goes to save Yushi, but gets stopped by Xuanchen's warriors. Availing the moment, Gao Yu attacks her, but he gets defeated. Kin Lai gets angry, summons lightning, and is about to attack Xuantian. Liang then attacks Kin Lai from behind, causing Kin Lai to fall, saying no one from the evil clan should be spared with life. Xuanchen is about to kill Kin Lai when an old man with a wolf appears. He introduces himself as Lai Mu and asks her to spare Kin Lai's life. Lai Mu previously noticed the lightning in the forest and decided to check the scene with his wolf Xiao Bing, only to find out the reason behind the lightning was his old friend's grandson, Kin Lai. Later, after calling Yushi in his dreams, Kin Lai wakes up in front of Lai Mu in the mountains of extreme cold. On Kin Lai's inquiry, Lai Mu introduces himself as his grandfather's friend. Kin Lin is hurt, but he still wants to go find Gao Yu and Yushi. Lai Mu stops him, saying they're alive and he must join the armament sect to see them, which is the biggest sect of weapon refiners on the Chillin continent have their hand on the lives of all warriors on the continent. Many people want to join the Kiju continent every year, but they must pass through the 12 spirit pattern pillars to get selected. Not caring about any dangers waiting for him in the armament sect, Kin Lai wants to go there right away. Lai Mu notices similarities between Kin Lai and his grandfather, and gives him the Terminator Profound Bomb that will help him in the armament sect. Meanwhile, Xuanchen goes back to her father's eye and tells him about the increase in soul-devouring beasts on the nether battlefield. After she leaves, Zhu Liu Yu is asked about the task given to her. Outside, Xuanchen meets Song Tingyu, who intrigues her to attack after Song claims, Xuanchen has killed a girl. Gao Yu gains consciousness in a room having dead bodies and is astonished when a giant baby monster attacks him. But Gao Yu tears his finger, provoking him. He violently attacks Gao Yu, kicking him outside. Gao Yu wonders if he's in the nether world. Gao Yu is injured but still fights the baby monster using his powers, but a member of the Horn Devil race helps him kill the monster. Lion Ru, this year's Kiju sect examiner, says the entry test to select a few people has two parts. She tells them the rules and regulations for weapon refining, which is using spirit aura and spirit minerals to make a weapon. Some people appreciate Lion Ru's beauty, 
while others think Tang Siki is pretty. However, Kin Lai is not interested in the conversation. Lai and Ru reaches the first level of the entrance test and demonstrates the first task. Climbing the mountain top using columns as support. Seeing this simple task, two men jump to try but end up in the river due to the breaking of columns. Lai and Ru describes to everyone about Spirit Weapon Soul, the Spirit Array map asking everyone to leave if they don't know this basic thing. Yi Zhu is confident about this task until Liang Sheyang, and Yinglu's young master, appears and tries to attack Yi Zhu. Lion Ru stops them. Yi Zhu makes a move crossing the columns, surprising Lion Ru. But after falling soon gains momentum and reaches the mountain, while Lion Sheyang also reaches the mountain by destroying the pillars. Everyone was complaining, but Kin Lai reached the mountains with lightning powers. In the dark, Lion Ru tells everyone to pass the core sect, starting in the furnace room. The test is to make soul artifacts, and all the soul materials and tools are present in the space ring on a candlestick near everyone. At the start of the test, everyone chooses their soul materials. Lion Ru likes Yi Zhu's choice of the furnace and other materials. He is determined to prepare a special gift for Lion Ru, while Tang Siki appears to reveal the right soul scheme of the gift snow robe, surprising everyone. While praising this year's candidates, Lang Sheyong's choice surprised Tang Siki and Lion Ru to create an earth fetus. Lion Ru is counting on Kin Lai, which disappoints Tang Siki. Tang Siki talks with everyone, which gets in the way of their artifact making. Liang Sheyang also gets tricked by Tang Siki. Yi Zhu ruins Tang Siki's plan while Kim Lai is making a difficult circular soul artifact. Kim Lai's sudden power humiliates Tang Siki as she tries to trick him. Elder Dong asks Tang Siki to forgive Kin Lai. He says she started the tricks and asks all candidates to follow him to Kiju's holy land, the Twelve Spirit Columns. He tells them that this place has a mystery that can be solved by a sincere heart. For 30 years, only Elder Mohai and Tang Siki can light up the columns. Elder Dong asks seven of them to attempt lighting up of the columns. Everyone introduces themselves and their purpose for coming here. A man tells Ying Tianren that the Twelve Spirit Columns are awake. Ying Tianren likes Liang Sheyang and orders him to meet in person. Liang Sheyang awakens the Spirit Column, surprising everyone. Meanwhile, Elder Dong welcomes Chief Ying Tianren approaching to meet Liang Sheyang and orders him to call all the elders to proclaim all over the world. Liang Sheyang annoys Yi Zhu. When Kin Lai asks about Ling Yushi, Liang Sheyang tells him to go to Artifact Town to find Feng Shen in a shop called Feng Mei. Kin Lai goes to Feng Mei to ask about Ling Yushi. Feng Mei wants something from Kin Lai before she tells him anything. When Kin Lai finally understands the demand, he can come back. As soon as he leaves, another girl comes inquiring about Ling Yushi, who was killed in Glenstone Forest. Lian Ru on the other side is trying to calm Tang Siki who is angry about Kin Lai's actions. Superior giving duties to everyone tells Kin Lai to arrange herbs for Tang Siki in the core sect living there. Later, Tang Siki's men order Kin Lai to grind the herbs into powders in five days. If not, he must leave the Kiju sect. Kin Lai finds poison in the herbs. After five days, superior men come, but Kin Lai tricks them. Tang Siki gets angry and decides to change him. Near the river, Tang Siki orders Kin Lai to deal with a double tail batfish. She wants a complete skeleton to make a sword. She keeps giving Kin Lai tasks, but she's still angry with his behavior. Lai and Ru manages to calm her by saying Kin Lai's behavior is his way of impressing her. Yi Rong is anxious about Tang Siki's likeness to Kin Lai and discusses it with Liang Sheyang. In the netherworld, Gao Yu escapes with the horned devil on a horse-shaped animal, and asks him about his intention of saving him as their evil race hates humans. Horned devil introduces the horned devil race, who is as hostile to the purple pupil evil race as humans, showing the village to Gao Yu. In the village, horned devil shows the humans saved by their race, willing to live with them. But after Gao Yu's inquiring, the horned devil shows the stone tower as the place for unwilling humans as it leads to the surface of Chilin land directly. While walking with the horned devil, Gao Yu, surprised by his body's behavior in the netherworld, approaches the general who takes the horned devil to have a private talk while Gao Yu notices a Xuanchen League mark on the general's neck. Kin Lai helps Tang Siki in the furnace room. Suddenly, the artifact unbalances and blows up the place. Kin Lai and Tang Siki argue, but Kin Lai is concerned for Tang Siki's hand. Tang Siki asks Kin Lai to leave the place and never come again, and Lai and Ru comes to see Tang Siki. Standing in the Twelve Spirit Column, Kin Lai admires Tang Siki's effort, remembering Lai Mu's words for finding Ling Yushi. Kin Lai manages to light up the Spirit Column, shocking Liang Sheyang. In the village, Gao Yu follows the general, eavesdropping on them from the roof, who are discussing a variation girl in Kin Lai. Horn Devil orders the general to break Gao Yu's legs after hearing a noise. The general attacks Gao Yu, but he manages to escape. 
Gao Yu, while running wonders about their conversation about Qin Lai and the Variation Girl, expects her to be Lang Yushi. The general, being the member of the Xuanchen League is running behind Gao Yu to catch him alive and present him to the Horn Devil. After he catches Gao Yu injures his liver, the place where spirit power is stored. He makes Gao Yu one of the Satan who breaks the cage. Gao Yu can use spiritual and dark evil powers, but after turning evil, he only wants to go back to the Chillin Continent through the tower. The general reaches the tower gate, and after defeating the guards enters inside. Inside, when he was expecting more guards but didn't find only, made him wonder if the guards were burned to death by Gao Yu. He reveals that Gao Yu will not pass through the second layer of the tower, which the three giant evil babies guard. When he reaches the second layer of the tower, to his surprise, all the babies have also been defeated. He then follows Gao Yu to the gate, which can only be opened with spiritual powers and not by evil powers. The general attacks Gao Yu, but Gao Yu attacks him back with more force. After wrapping Gao Yu in a cocoon that can absorb his evil power and transform him back to his normal human form, he reports to the Horn Devil that Gao Yu is helping them. Gao Yu breaks out of the cocoon and realizes he has regained his spiritual powers. He then opens the door to the first seal of the Chilin Continent. Inside the first gate, Gao Yu encounters humans' corpses. Horn Devil reveals that they have been capturing the Devil Race for long to open the door. However, no one keeps alive after entering the first door. The second door can only be opened by a person with the Devil and spiritual powers. Horn Devil reveals with the help of the Xuanchen League, he will be able to take over the Chilin Continent. Back at the Kiju sect, Lang Sheyang tries to pick up a fight with Kin Lai. However, when they are about to fight, some warriors appear with instructions to protect Liang Sheyang. Far aside, when Man inspects this quarrelsome situation, he is informed that a person with dark evil power has shown up in the courtyard. In Kiju's sect, Song gets to know that Ting Wu has gone to the Kiju's sect and is now present at the Tingfeng Pavilion of Kiju Tao. Soon, a general appears and tells them that the nether world is open. They're ready to give a map of the Huash Valley in the nether world. Song then orders Ying Lu to get prepared within seven days as they being the Xuanchen League, are going to take over Kiju's sect soon. Somewhere, Chief Ying gets visited by the daughter of the leader of the Xuanchen League Song, who wants to borrow a person from him. In the middle of the conversation with Song, he is reported about the dispute between Liang and Kin Lai in the Spirit Column. In the Spirit Column, Liang attacks Kin Lai with the Spirit Array. Kin Lai defends himself with the attacking weapons. When they both leave their ultimate attacks, they get stopped by Yang and Song, while Kin Lai, tired of the attack, falls to the ground unconscious. Kin Lai wakes up in the healing pool. Song tells that she borrowed him from Yang and saved him because Feng Shen from the Tingfeng Pavilion told her she could get whatever she wanted from him. She enters his mind, where she witnesses a chained Kin Lai. When Kin Lai comes in enraged, the leader of Zumao, Lang Zai, gets to see him along with Gao Yu. Kin Lai is glad to know Go Yu is still alive. Gao Yu says he was in the Nether Clan. There, he learned Xuanchen and the Nether Clan were partnering to go to the Chillin Continent. However, the leader's daughter, Song, objects. She wants him to explain everything. Lang Zai explains that Gao Yu is telling the truth. Lang Zai mentions Yushi in her talk, which perplexes Kin Lai. However, Song promises to tell everything if he remains calm. Liang receives the message to get ready in seven days to attack the Kinji clan. Liang then knows the fastest way to become a sect master is to kill the master and take the support of three elders. However, out of the three, only Dong is the problem which Liang will have to address to support him fully. Song and Kin Lai tell Yang what's happening. Liang goes to Dong and threatens him to be the next clan master. Later, soon he goes to Tang Siki and Ling Kai, where he is going to attack them. It can't be true, but it all ends here, leaving everyone under the sharp knife of curiosity. This is all for this anime. Give the video a like, and I will see you in the next minutes.